of Betting Network's NFL Week 12 Breakdown, the Thanksgiving Day edition. So I guess this will be part one of the Week 12 Breakdown because I'm going to just go over the three Thursday Thanksgiving Day games. Um, like always, you know, I'll go over each game from a market perspective, discuss some game theory, kind of give my opinions or bets I've made or are looking to make, and just, you know, provide some info that will lead you to cashing some tickets, or at least that's a goal anyway. I'm not sure if I'll be able to deliver on that, but I'll try. Uh, there are three games. So we got six teams playing on Thanksgiving, and all of them have something in common. They all played this past Sunday, and all six teams lost, uh, which makes for kind of an interesting dynamic from a market perspective, um, you know, which teams will be getting betting support or not. You know, most weeks you can kind of get a pretty good idea on which teams will be getting the betting support, especially when you have one team coming off a win, you know, playing a team coming off a loss. Recency bias is very common in, uh, within the betting public. Um, they tend to wait. Um, you know, what they just saw pretty heavily rather than looking at the big picture. Uh, now we have a 10 game sample size now too. So we should all have a pretty good idea on team strengths and weaknesses or, you know, kind of their style of play or what they like to do. Uh, and it's also pretty clear now which teams still have playoff hopes, which teams don't. Last, uh, yeah, last week we saw uh, some teams basically have their seasons end. Um, and on the flip side, we saw some teams, you know, keep their seasons alive. Teams like the Vikings and uh, well, uh, 49ers, they both won and they moved to five and five record. That's such a big difference between five and five and four and six. And then you got teams like Seattle and Chicago, you know, losing last week basically eliminates their playoff hopes. Um, both are now three and seven. A win last week would have been four and six uh, and you'd still have some hope. Uh, so that's something we want to kind of keep an eye on are, you know, these teams who have something to play for still and the teams who may have just had their playoff dream shattered. You know, motivation is huge in um, sports betting. It's also almost impossible to quantify or measure its worth. And it's very tough to predict. You know, motivation is kind of almost impossible to predict. But uh, and there's not a metric that shows, you know, success rate of the more motivated teams. But I'm fairly certain that in most sports, the more motivated team has an edge. But uh um, and we actually might have a situation kind of like this in the first game. If we look at Chicago, Detroit uh, on Thanksgiving, these uh, two teams, both of them aren't making the postseason. Um, but there might be a motivational edge with the Lions. You know, the Bears are coming off basically the season ending loss last week. Um, and it's tough, you know, for those players, like, you know, their motivation, what are they playing for now? You know what I mean? A lot of those guys are like free agents, too. What are they going to go out there and play their heart out, get banged up, get hurt? and then, you know, mess up their money next year. Uh, but the Lions, you know, they're obviously out of the playoffs uh, and have been for a while, but uh, they're still looking for their first win. You know, nobody wants to go winless. But, uh, yeah, I mean, if we look here, uh, the bets are pretty much split uh, on the spread between Chicago and Detroit. Now, um, Detroit was getting almost like 66 65% of the money um, on the spread, but you can understand a lot of that money came at the opener when uh, the Lions were three and a half. The money since died down now, now that the Lions moved to three, but uh, Detroit pretty much, you know, was getting lopsided money um, when they were three and a half. Uh, but it's like I said, it's moved down a little bit since uh, the adjustment to three. Um, QB uncertainty all week. Uh, Dalton was just named the starter yesterday, which would have been Tuesday, but uh, Fields. Uh, left the game against Baltimore, and then Dalton came in, and, you know, now he's the starter. Uh, yeah, as of now, Detroit still hasn't named their starter as of uh, basically Wednesday morning. And I personally don't really care who the starting quarterback is for the Lions. They both stink. You know, uh, Tim Boyle, he made his uh, first career start for the injured Goff uh, last week, and Boyle threw for 77 yards. Um and Lions running back, DeAndre Swift, he ran for 136, I believe. You don't see that too uh, too often with a running back has more rushing yards than the quarterback does passing yards. But, um, yeah, Bears are missing some key run stoppers. Uh, and they play a lot of, like, three safety looks too. So uh, I think the Lions can find some success running the ball here. And I did bet the Lions uh, plus three and a half on Monday. I posted it in the Betting Network Discord community. Uh, I'm sure some members must think, you know, I just try to bet the ugliest uh, possible teams each week. But the truth is I really try not to consider, you know, the teams all that much, or at least, you know, the, the perception of the teams, I should say. Um, but my thought process really is neither one of these teams are deserving to be favorites in this spot. 
and definitely not a favorite of more than three, uh, a field goal. Um, you know, the line of the Bears being minus three and a half on the opener, which is where I bet the Lions at is plus three and a half. Uh, but the Bears being a three and a half point road favorite is basically the odds makers saying that this game, if it was in Chicago, the Bears would be like a seven point favorite or six and a half. Uh, because remember, home field advantage is worth at least uh, you know two or three points, probably closer to three points at Soldier Field in Chicago. And I make this game closer to the Bears minus two. Uh, so when I can get plus three and a half on the Lions, especially at minus one ten, I'm going to do that every time. Uh, that doesn't mean you have to bet them or you know or follow me on that. But um, you know my ultimate goal with making bets is to win money, and because I can't predict the future or you know guess which team's going to win, I have to do what I know works and. That's betting a team plus three and a half when my numbers say they should be plus two or plus two and a half at the very most. So uh, Detroit is currently plus three across the board. And, you know, if you're looking to bet Detroit, um, don't buy the three and a half. The Discord members know the rules about buying points. Um, if you don't know the rules, ask me in the Betting Network Discord community because uh, I can tell you the rules of uh, when and when not to buy half points. Uh, this total is kind of interesting. It did uh, crash a bit. A lot of books opened at 45. It's now down to 41 and a half. Um, I guess I do lean under because that type of game strongly correlates to, you know, how I would see the Lions covering or winning, you know, a slow running grind them out type game. But uh, yeah, I'm going Lions there. But let's move right along the 430 game. Raiders, Cowboys, um, Dallas getting most of the bets. Money is on the Raiders. Uh, and it's kind of interesting to see Dallas getting, you know, most of the public betting support uh, despite – I mean, it's against the Raiders, but, I mean, the, Dallas got dominated last week against the Chiefs in pretty much every aspect of the box score. But they're getting betting support, but I think that speaks more about the Raiders than anything else. Um, I had a big bet against the Raiders last week. I was on Cincy and talked a lot about that game last week. Uh, the Raiders as a team, they're a mess. Uh, when you look at a team and can't find any areas uh, in which they're, like, really good at, you know, it's just simply an average team. But you throw in having a rookie coach now. Uh, they're going on the road on a short week after a bad loss. I mean, I'd want nothing to do with the Raiders here either. So it kind of makes sense that at least Dallas is getting the betting support. The money looks a little bit um, lopsided on um, the Raiders, but it's still a little too early to uh, kind of, um, you know, tell if that's sharp dollars or not. And, uh, you know, I actually meant to bring this up last week. But uh, most of the time you see books all aligned posting the same spreads. But if uh, we look at this game here, Raiders, uh, Dallas, you can see some nines out there and then seven and a halves. Um, and, you know, this is fairly common. And it's the books doing what they're called like teaser blockers. Uh, the books know everyone's going to be looking to tease Dallas and, you know, making them nine. Uh, it makes that six point teaser down to three much less appealing. You know, you're not crossing that key number and, you know, they could move from seven and a half to eight or eight and a half, but it doesn't do much because those are dead zone numbers anyway. Um, so they just move right from seven and a half to nine, uh, which I don't even, I still don't think that's going to stop uh, much Dallas action. <clears throat> Dallas, every Thanksgiving day, they get, uh, they get the action, you know, the America's team. Uh, they always get the betting support on Thanksgiving. And every year it seems to be like the same thing. Dallas gets the betting love early uh, or the days leading up to the game. Odds makers know Dallas will get the action. So they adjust. They go from here seven to seven and a half, which is only a half point, but that's a big half point um, or on the game or close, like, you know, closer to kickoff on the, the day of the game, the other side, at least I'm talking like historically on, on Cowboys Thanksgiving Day games, the other side will start to get action, you know, sharp start picking off uh, the value and then the number will settle. So I think if you are looking to bet Dallas, wait maybe closer to kickoff. I'm not sure if it will go back to seven, but I think the line will come back down, at least maybe on the juice. But uh, it's, And it could be one of those games where I, I see Dallas winning by like 30 points. But um, it's just not comforting, you know, after seeing them three turnovers last week. I think they were 0 for 3 or maybe 0 for 2 in the red zone. And plus, Dallas is banged up right now. You know, as a team, uh, well, actually, this point in the season, every team's pretty much banged up. But for Dallas, no Amari Cooper. Uh, now C.D. Lamb is banged up. His status is still up in the air. He left last game with concussion. Zeke isn't 100%. Um, you know, he's probably going to play, but he's different when he's banged up. And uh, this is probably a stay-away spot for me. But, uh, yeah, this is another game where the total got some heavy steam to the under. Um, you know, circa opener there, it shows 51. But the look-ahead line on this total, you know, before last Sunday's games, this total was 54 and a half. 
Um, yeah, I want to double check that. I'm pretty sure the total was 54 and a half. Uh, yeah, so most books did open 54 and a half. And after last week's game on, um, you know, after the Chiefs game and then the, um, the Raiders Bengals game, the lines came, they reopened on Monday and every book, you know, basically opened either 50 or 51, which is a pretty big line move based on, um, you know, just one game in Dallas only scoring nine points there last week. But, uh, last game on Thanksgiving, the 820 game. Uh, Buffalo and New Orleans, uh, Buffalo getting most of the bets. The money's pretty, uh, pretty even. Um, Buffalo has moved from four to now five and a half, six, six is starting to pop up. Um, you know, I did bet Buffalo, uh, minus four and a half on Monday. And, um, you know, I was very conflicted on the decision to kind of make it an official best bet in the betting network discord community. I decided not to, for a couple of reasons. Uh, one of them being, uh, I think the market is kind of, you know, as a as a whole, I think too high on Buffalo and just too down on the Saints. Uh, you know, both teams are coming off ass whoopings. The Bills have now lost three of their last five, um, but the betting bu- the, you know the betting public still believes in them. You know, and they're expecting a big bounce back, but they've completely given up on the Saints. Um, and I do kind of agree, but it, it's tough when you know the consensus is all that one way, but. Uh, yeah, one thing the Saints might have going for them uh, on this game, I guess it will be like Drew Brees night or something. They're going to honor him. Uh, he's going to be actually announcing the game, too, with Tariko. Uh They'd probably rather have him on the field right now than in the booth announcing. But um, I do think um, the Bills have a matchup edge here. I think, um, you know, Josh Allen, I think he can have success on both the ground, running the ball, and through the air. Uh, Jalen Hurts ran all over the Saints defense and, uh, that was with the Saints not even respecting the passing game and just keying on runs, and Hurt still got what he wanted. Um, and Buffalo has that run option from the QB spot with Allen, but uh, they also got the big play potential, and I've talked about this a couple times in these breakdowns. The Saints' pass defense, they give up a ton of big passes. I want to say they rank at like 24th or 25th in the league at defending passes over 20 yards, or explosive pass plays as they call them. So if the Bills are able to score, which I think they will, how can the Saints keep up? You know, when you remove Kamara – from this Saints offense, like who the hell do they even have? They got a backup QB. Um, they got both starting tackles that are out. I don't even know who their number one wide receiver is, to be honest. Um, Callaway, maybe? I don't even know. But, uh, yeah, the Saints, they got dominated by the Eagles. Um, and when I was breaking down the Saints, like, uh, at my power rating number for the Saints this week, um, and some of you guys that have watched that um, How to Create Your Own Power Ratings uh, video I did will understand what I mean, but the Saints box score last week is very misleading. Um, you know, all their yards and points uh, came during, you know, garbage time late in the fourth quarter against like a soft prevent defense. The Saints ended up finishing with like a 5.2 uh, passing yards per play average, uh, but it was a 33 to 7 point game at that point. So the box scores can be very misleading and, you know, uh, contrary to like what most people say, numbers do lie sometimes. And it's something to keep in mind when you're kind of rating teams. You want to adjust your numbers based on those garbage time or non-garbage time points and yards. Um, you know, they mean very little if a team's marching down the field and it's, you know, a four-touchdown game. And I'm going to talk more about, um, you know, game state and stuff like that in that fast-track uh, four-week betting course I'm doing. It's taken me a while, but it's because it's just tough to find time right now just to dedicate solely to that. But um, that, that betting course is coming. But, um, yeah, I'm on Buffalo there. I took four and a half, so uh, we'll see how that goes. It's not an official bet or anything, but um, that is going to do it for me. I hope you guys have a great Thanksgiving with the fam. You know, I hope you guys cash some tickets too. But one piece of advice, you know, try to be present, you know, during the holidays. Like, um, you know, don't let sports betting control your day. And I say that because, I mean, I can't even count how many holidays where I either wasn't there completely or, you know, was there physically, but just not really there because of sports betting, either with work related or, you know, the years when I was a bookie, forget about it. I couldn't, you know, even be around people. Um, I had to be on the phone, but, uh, and this will all make sense when you're older. I know some of you younger guys just can't wait to like drink and then sweat, you know, eat and sweat out the, uh, the games, but, um, it'll make sense when you're older. But, uh, I'm out of here. Hope this one helped you. And uh, until next time, good luck with all your bets. And as always, may all the refs calls and all the loose balls go your way.